default had measured the inductance and the resistance of the current head. So here we go. Let's see what we get. So that's have a look. Dead on seventy millihenries. And that is at that's two hundred twenty ohms. Um, and that's a test frequency of one kilohertz. Uh, okay, well that gives me a ballpark, doesn't it? Um, I wish I knew entirely how to uh, change this to a different uh, frequency. Or maybe you can, but be useful to measure it at more than uh, one point. I'm not quite sure how to do that. No. Um, I've got another head here, a uh, substitute one. Um, it's a Phillips head, but I bet it's not going to be anything similar to what we've got here. It'll be interesting to see. Let's have a look. Well, that's got a capacitance. That's a bit worrying. Let's try an alternative terminal. That's connected another way. Well that's 98.45 millihenries. That's that's quite different. 423 ohms. one kilohertz that sounds completely different we're reluctant to substitute that one with a completely different resistance um, and 30 percent or so difference it'd be interesting to see what that uh, inductance of the uh, deck i was using was uh, let's try connecting that up Right, let's give that one a whirl. That's completely different. 131. 209. The DC resistance is similar, but the inductance is so much higher. Um, that's amazingly different, isn't it? Uh, very much different. Hmm. I have to go away and have a think about this, I think. Okay, I'm just having a think about changing this head. Even though the inductance is lower on this head, I've done a bit of um, research on the web and it's suggesting that uh, the inductance can drop up to 60% with a worn head. I've got no way of knowing how worn this is, but it's pretty worn from what we've seen with the Frick's response. So I've got this replacement head. Let's just pull out a bit. There we go. I've got this replacement head. Um, interesting, the connections are different. So I'm not sure which is the earthy side of the head. That's another problem to solve, maybe reversing it. Um, and seeing which which side gives the lowest hum, but uh, it looks like there's a slot on both sides here. And I thought, well, what I could do is, as there's a slot on one side of this head, sorry if I can just get my big dirty fin fingers out of the way, um, I could slide it in and not disturb one side. Typically, when I check check the um, manual, I'm discovering that the side that um, isn't supposed to be adjusted is opposite the side I have got a slot on here. Um, however, if I keep, I'm thinking in my mind, if I keep one side the same, then I can just use the opposite side of azimuth. Um, so that, that's the problem, is it's the opposite way round. This one's the azimuth, and that one is the permanently stopped one, and of course this has not got a slot in, so I can't slide it in that side. So I might See about taking this one off, 
pulling the head off, sliding this one in and using this as the azimuth. if I know that's not the ideal situation. It's many decades since I've replaced a head and uh, trying to align them was never easy. Um, in the case of cassette, all the ones I've replaced did have one permanent set side. Um, in the case of reel to reel, I had to adjust it until I thought I was on track. Um, so it's not the easiest thing to do, but um, I think I'm going to give it a try. I intend to use this deck mainly for playback, um, but I, I think we're going to need to do a lot of twigging on the uh, bias. So the biggest worry is, is this head has got a lot higher resistance. Um, that's going to alter quite a number of things on the record. I don't expect it to do a lot on playback. But if the resistance is high, it could lower the actual audio output. But it won't be more than 3 dB. I guess the worry is the tracking on the DNL. But uh, I'm going to give it a go anyway. And uh, I, I don't really see I have much to lose on this. Um, with the current state of the head, it's not really usable. Unless you like telephone uh, quality music. OK, so the new head is in. It was a little awkward. In the finish I had to release the azimuth by two turns because the spring was just so tight. It was making it impossible to get the head in and I've reset that. So at least I'm at a starting point now with the alignment of the head. Um, I pulled one wire off to try and make sure I got a channel identification. As far as I know the channel is the right way round. I'll have to uh, check that again later on. Uh, but the new head is in and I've managed to put it in without damaging it. It's very good it come with this uh, nice head cover. I had to be careful not to hit the raised head. That really would be a problem. Um, if I have to change that, um, that would seriously probably affect the uh, bias generation circuit. So I definitely don't want to damage that. As far as I know the erasure is pretty good but I haven't tried recording over anything else yet to see if it is effective. Um, but at least we're uh, getting somewhere now. Well I've done my first test and uh, that's not too bad. It looks like the base, uh, sorry the lower frequencies are a little bit more exaggerated than they were. Now I haven't demagnetized the head and I hadn't touched the azimuth. I'm just using a little method because I think the azimuth is not far out. Um, I used the method of of um, putting, if I can just show this, I'll zoom out a little bit, I've connected the two channels together to make it mono, mono and listening on the uh, headset and just a, the slightest tweak on the one that I had undone and that just got rid of any phase cancellation so I'm I'm pretty certain that we're not far out so uh, I'm inclined to just do a few more tests and leave it at, leave it at that. Um, I just had another go after doing demagnetization, and uh, that's looking even better. Oh, also I've done the azimuth adjustment as well, so um, that's not too bad. I'm not quite sure why it's a little bit higher there, but it's not quite as flat as I think it was originally. I, f I think the problem's going to be when we start to set up to the recording. I'm trying to think how to tackle that. Um, the idea would be to record a tone, like my auto bias deck does, and record it at different bias settings, and then examine how high I can put the bias until the high frequency starts to drop. Measuring distortion, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I, I might have a distortion meter, but it's just depends how uh, complicated I want to get. So I think that's going to be the next thing is to uh, start looking at the uh, record side. I think I may reassemble it um, once I've cleaned everything again, because I think I've got grease over everything. Um, but good, good progress.